What's up, everybody? This is Podcast Game Overs, episode 175 for Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. I am Wasabi Ice Cream, joined as always by Rick. What's up? What's up, everybody? It's Rick. I'm here live from the wasteland. Yeah, playing Fallout right now, but Which I'm one? here to talk about oh, Fallout 4. Wow, I've been getting a lot of like Fallout 4 re- like recommended videos on my YouTube feed, and I'm like, I'm gonna play it now. Thanks, thanks a lot. Like about how shitty it is. Algorithms. I think Fallout 4 is fine. Like I think it's a okay. fine game. Okay. <laughs> It's a okay. fun game. I think it's pretty fun. Does it have the same depth as like New Vegas? No, no, it doesn't. But the game feels finished, so that's cool. <laughs> what mod you get? Nah. You got that CBBE? <laughs> nah, I'm just playing vanilla right now. Wow. Yeah, wow. I like these games vanilla. I'm sorry. I know I'm weird. You at least have to get the one. There's one that changes all the dialogue options to be what you're actually saying. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's all like yes, no, sarcasm, and like yeah, it's like it's like yes, no, sarcastic, and question. Yeah, like clarifying question. Yeah. But if you install that mod, it, it changes it to what you actually say, and most of the options, or a lot of the time, every option is just the same <laughs> fucking dialogue. Uh, like it 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 masks it masks the reality that that game actually has no fucking options because oh yeah <laughs> all roads lead to yes oh i know i know yeah. this game has like no actual options yeah <laughs> um, i'm not playing it for that though. i'm playing for the crazy shit you can do just yeah. the insane builds and Especially, like, when you get to the automaton stuff, like, just making your own robot army, it's stupid. The stupid shit this game lets you do. This game could have been great if it had, like, a little bit more design focus. Yeah, you could say the same for every Bethesda game. Yeah. Including This specifically, though. This specifically, though, like... God damn it, man. Like... Like, survivor mode could have been great if it lets you, like, not even fast travel, but some sense of fast travel between, like, your bases. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? Like, I understand not wanting, to f- not wanting fast travel, but let me set up, like, if I'm setting up caravans already between, like, my, 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 uh, my, my safe houses or my, uh, my settlements, just do something like that. Like, don't even call it fast travel. Like, let me travel in real time, but, like, skip it. So I could still get hungry, you know, still get thirsty and stuff. Like, let let that happen still, but, you know, let me, like, skip through all that bullshit. Are you playing on survival? No, I gave up on that. The problem with survival is it's not just a, it's not a checkbox. It's like a, um, it's a difficulty above legendary. So you have to yeah. play on, like, the bullshit legendary stats which is like the enemies do three times damage and then you do like 0.5 damage to the enemies and then on top of that it's like survival mode it's like bullshit like if it it was just a checkbox and you can just play on like standard damage scaling but with the survival shit like that'd be way better like that game's unplayable to me without mods to like (laughs) fix that shit because the mods will fix all of that like you can have you can have your survival mode with the fast travel thing that you tell there's exactly a mod for that like all your connected settlements you can fast travel to them um you can save it in a bed without having to sleep in it and you there's can a, there's um, a couple of things it does too though like um there's um how can i word it um So it increases, like, I think survival, I'm looking it up right now, I think survival increases, like, the experience you actually get, so you level up a bit faster. Yeah, it's, like, 200% experience gain with survival mode, um, 150% legendary chance, so you actually have a higher chance of getting, like, legendary items from enemies yeah, with all the better that's, drops. That's part of the, <laughs> that's part of the difficulty thing, 
like every difficulty increase increases the whatever you I have the gain. I have the poll here and survival mode is the only one that has like an XP multiplier everything else is just set at 100% what? and legendary chances yeah legendary chance is higher on survival than it is on like hard mode yeah no that's that's <laughs> bullshitty a little bit like it, it could be a fun mode i don't even mind it on the high difficulty like i i could deal with it it's just like it's all the other stuff surrounding it. It's the not being able to fast travel that does it for me. Because this game is so fucking massive, dude. Like, without the ability to fast travel, it's like, oh, I'll just never go back to Sanctuary now. Yeah. And, like, a simple way to change that is, like, just let me fast travel, quote-unquote, between, like, my settlements. At least the ones that I set up caravans for. Let me hop on a caravan, maybe, like, how much I outfit them will decrease, like, the chances of me, like, you know, not getting fucking raided. You know, Dragon's Dogma 2 does it. Like, Dragon's Dogma 2 does that already. Like, it lets me, like, fast travel without having to use a fairy stone between, um, between, uh, different cities. The only the only caveat is I gotta hop on an ox. I gotta pay for the money. I gotta pay to, for the for the ride, and it's not really a fast travel. Like time still moves along. I just fall asleep in the cart, yeah. and I can get attacked while it's happening. Or I could just stay awake and just literally watch the whole trip play out in real time. Like it's not this like, it's not this like crazy thing. And I wish, like, Fallout is something similar to that, because it'd be so much better, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably going to play it that long. I'm probably going to play it for, like, a little bit, and then get bored of it, and then never turn it back on. <laughs> yeah, it's just a comfortable they... game for me. Yeah, it is a cozy, just lean back and chill game. Just build, you know, build uh, settlements. Dude, the mods for that game are crazy. Like, there, there's yeah. people turn that shit into like fucking call it like uh, like a stalker simulator. Like the weapon mods and the the UI mods for it are fucking insane. Oh yeah. Um, there's a guy that made uh, he turned it into like Sim City. Like every settlement has its own is like fully developed and has their own like ecosystem and their own like ai and they build the place like all on their own if you just let them if you just let them go which is crazy or you can go in and take it over and like build it up yourself and assign people to different uh it's like insane the mods for that shit see that's cool like <laughs> see that's really cool i might i might try that then yeah um, fuck with that stuff. <laughs> um, no, <I'm> joke's <laughs> sad. That's what I. Yeah, so that's what I've been playing. Fallout Four. I'm um, also. I'm playing a bunch of stuff, but Fallout Four is what I'm playing like right, right now. Yeah. And I want to talk about some of the games I'm playing, but you've been playing Neo Two. Yeah, I've been playing. I played a little bit of Neo Two. Played a few hours of that. And. Uh... <laughs> The game is fucking crazy, man, because there's so much. There's so much in Neo 2 that yeah. I just, I don't, I don't know if I'm playing the game correctly. I, actually, You're probably not. I'm You're pretty probably sure not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm pretty You're sure I'm not. You're probably not. not. <laughs> You're probably not. Like, it's really easy to, like, develop your character the wrong way and just get your shit pushed in. Yeah. And I think that also the game is like hard, you know, it's a, it's a souls like, so it has a reputation of being a hard game. So you don't, you don't even know it's just from your build. You're just like, oh, maybe that's just how the game is like, no, no, not even like, I'm not even talking build wise. I'm just talking systems wise, like mechanics wise. I don't understand the mechanics. Oh, yeah. Like... There's, there's like it wants to be like a Diablo like and a souls like at the same time. And, uh, and, and a monster gets, hunter. And a monster hunter, yeah. It gets that stuff confused. Like, it's really... 
it's a trip dude <laughs> it's a trip it feels like, like it's, uh it's it's fucking awesome but at the same yeah. time i'm like there's so many mechanics that i just don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing i don't know if i'm doing it right i don't know like the biggest thing i don't understand is like the fucking the active reload system where like you you do an attack and then if you hit the r1 button i think you like get some of that uh you're like stamina back, back. yeah I yeah. just don't understand it at all. I don't understand it <laughs> because it costs. What's not to understand it, about it? I just don't know what, like, when I'm supposed to hit that. Like, I don't know when I'm supposed to hit it. Like, do I hit it every time I do an attack? Like, if I'm doing a combo, am I just supposed to be mashing the R1 button to get that stamina back? No, it's or after do I do it a at combo. The end of a combo. So that stamina that gets pulled out, because right? Because you never have, you never have enough stamina to like fully do. You can't do like two combos. Like, you run out of stamina so fucking fast. So I'm okay. like, when am I supposed to be to, hitting this? And then I'm supposed I'm to, like, to, like, blow your mind right defend now. and dodge at the same time, but I'm out of stamina now, so I can't do shit. Uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> it's up to you to determine when you want to use it. But the way it works is you use up stamina, and part of the bar dissipates, but there's also part of the bar that's, like, transparent. That's the part you can get back if you, like, active reload. So it's yeah. up to you to determine when it's appropriate to use that. Because it does, it takes, like, a second, right? Up to you to determine, like, hey, I got to knock this guy off his feet a little bit. I could active reload now if you want to do it after every attack, every other attack. And what's cool with it is that that plays into other mechanics. So I don't know if you fuck with the skill tree yet, but that skill tree is insane. It's deep, yeah. Every it's deep. Weapon there are some own. weapons that have abilities that proc off of that active reload. Yeah, I've seen that. So I that. think the Dual Blades has one. It's like, I'll increase, like, attack damage and attack speed after a successful, like, active reload. I don't, th I don't think they call it active reload. They call it something else, but... Yeah, but that's what it is. It's, like, active. It's, like, Gears of War. <laughs> Fucking, except there's no like precision to it you just hit it when i mean there is it says do it when it's i don't even know when to do it either like i don't know what the timing is on it you have uh, like a second before the as long as the bar is still gray you can do it because if you wait too long i think if you wait like a second after you do the attack or after you use up your stamina it just you'll see it just disappear and that's how you know it was too late to do it. Yeah. And then the I whole... think I'm trying to remember it. I think that's how it works. Oh my god, I'm fucking stuck in the terrain. Fuck this game. I'm done. <laughs> There's the whole um like stance system, which I don't know when to I don't know when to use that at all. I just use I just stay in the same stance and that again uses the same system it's like i i feel it i find it difficult to juggle all this again again it's another game that has a bunch of these systems that you're supposed to juggle in real time yeah. while you're fucking with shit and i just don't i just don't I'm, i feel like it's just too much again it's another it is, one of those it games. can be super overwhelming and each stance is like depending on your weapon like the the high stance i think is like strong attack slow speed Middle stance is, like, right in the middle of that. Low stance is, like, really fast attacks. High speed. Like, high speed, like, low damage. It's, it's... It varies from weapon to weapon, but the usefulness of each one is going to be different, too. So, like... Yeah. For example, if you're fighting a boss that, like, you know, takes a lot of damage, but they have low spirit, you know, their stamina bar, and you can use uh, your fast stance to like chip away at that stamina bar to get you ready for an attack uh the spear is one of my favorite weapons but the high stance does like a more area of effect attack while the normal stance is more centered so that's something that can change too it all depends on like your weapon what you're fighting even like the fucking area you're in because if it's an enclosed space you know one stance might be more beneficial than another it's making those choices in the middle of a fight is like what you have to do and it could be fucking overwhelming it could be really fucking overwhelming yeah like that's yeah i'm not i don't i don't switch my weapons i don't try to switch my stance uh i've i've settled on the fists i'm a fister 
Um, I love the fist because it's just one of those like it's fast, it's agile. You can just kind of stick and move with it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fond of the of the fists. But like, yeah, for me, that, it was uh, it was dual blades and the the spear. But there's like no synergy with those weapons, so I had to switch the dual blades to the normal katana. Because the normal katana and the spear um, use a lot of the same stats when you level up. So, I just picked those. That was a mistake I made in my first playthrough. I was like, I'm going to pick two totally opposite weapons. I have to invest these points through the two of them, and that's going to fuck me in the long run. I'm sure I don't have to. I'm sure I can get by with what I was doing, but dude, like it was, it was getting so fucking hard. Like, <laughs> yeah, that game gets really fucking hard. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, all of the upgrade shits, all of the, there's just a lot of systems in the game. Yeah, that I just don't know if I'm uh, using them correctly or, uh, yeah, it's. There's a lot to it, man. There's a lot to the game. There's a lot. There's a lot. And on top of that, it's got like a multiplayer system with like missions you can take on. You can adjust the difficulty to make them like to get more gear. That's where like the monster hunter stuff comes in. Yeah. Like it's it it takes a fucking turn and I'm just playing the base game and I'm like, I'm fucking overwhelmed right now. <laughs> I've tried to play through it like three times and it's fun. God damn it. When shit connects when yeah. it's when it's vibing it's so good but god damn that game has systems on systems on top of stats on top of stats and like meters on top of meters it's insane dude like it is complicated it's got depth of like old school diablo with like the dark souls difficulty I don't yeah. know what Koei Tecmo was smoking when they put this together, because it is—it's a fun experience when it vibes, but a lot of it's going to be you, like, okay, how does this work? Like, what does that do? And then googling stuff, and then it takes a long time for your character to like become to feel somewhat like good. Like when you start seeing skills yeah. and stuff and how they work. And on top of that, the fucking soul system. Oh my god, you could like get souls off of enemies and equip those and those give you new attacks and s affect your stats too. Oh yeah, like in like, like, a, like a Castlevania. Like Castlevania, uh, but yeah. these affect your stats too. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's there's so there's a lot to it. Man. Yeah, and you have a devil trigger. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like Devil May Cry that has its own separate skill tree and there's like three different forms you can like trigger into. And you can choose which one you want. And those stats are those stats are affected by the souls you get. My bad. I forgot how that worked. <laughs> it's it's a lot, but it's 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 fun. I liked it. It's fun. I might try it again now that you're playing it. And we can try it together and like try to get through this shit together. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea, because I'm I'm not sure how the multiplayer works. I know that you can like summon depending on the level of the other player, that's how many like resources it costs to summon, which is a interesting way to do it. But yeah, I think I have a few of those already. Uh, and I don't think it's like every mission. I think it's only like some like multiplayer missions. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, and it's, like, it's like mission based too, which I wasn't yeah. I thought it was more like like a souls where it'd be like open and you can kind of just roam around. But it is like here it's like level based, which is crazy. It's like like Phantom Pain, but it's not an open world. It's like Yeah. Oh what came up before Phantom Pain? Um not Ground Zeroes before that on the PSP. Oh uh Peace Walker. Where, yeah it's like Peace Walker. Yeah. You have like a main hub. You can put resources in that main hub to like increase like your stats, your loadouts, your weapons, and then from there you pick out your loadout. And then you, from there you pick the mission you want to do. It ha every mission has like a difficulty level and like what you get from finishing it. It's a lot like Peace Walker actually. Now now that like I thought about it, it's a lot like Peace Walker. Yeah. It's like Peace Walker mixed with Diablo, mixed with like a Souls like in like a feudal japanese setting with demons yeah it's a very interesting mix of shit man i, I very very interesting mix of shit that 
when you it's vibe just, with it, it's a good time. But <laughs> yeah, it takes a while to really understand everything that's that's happening. I guess. And, oh yeah. And I'm just not. <laughs> I'm still at the part where I'm just learning what the fuck is going on. But it's, I'm still it's at super that part. fun. Yeah. I've dumped. Let me pull up my Steam page for it. How much time have I put in that fucking game? Yeah, I only play like two hours. I have so. 38 hours in that game, yeah. and Damn. I'm still just kind of like, well, I got this <laughs> game like two years ago. Yeah. And I'm still kind of like, I'm not entirely sure how this is how this works. It's uh, it's in the humble bundle choice right now. It's how I got it. Twelve dollars oh, yeah. subscription. Um, you get this game and you get like five other games. So definitely worth it. It's the complete edition. So when I started it, it gave me a bunch of like higher level equipment. Oh yeah, to just, armor, uh, start weapons. Out with. That yeah, that but becomes like obsolete after a couple of missions. By the way, it, it was obsolete in the first like in the very beginning. I was already replacing that shit. So yeah. like it's got set bonus with that shit. So it gives you, but some also to wear that all of stuff it. you could like level up. Like, there's also like a mechanic to like increase the level of some of your equipment and re-roll some of the stats on them. Like, it's like it's, there's a whole last thing on that too. You can spend hours on like I don't even know that. every single mechanic here tinkering with it. Like it's it's crazy, dude. It's crazy, it's, like how much there is it's here. Very deep. Yeah, I was interested in because they just put out Rise of the Ronin, so on PS5. So I was like, I wonder, I should go back and play their, you know, Neo Two and see, because I wonder if any of this stuff transferred into Rise of the. Ronin. I haven't seen anything about. No one's really feels like no one's talking about that game, but um, yeah, no one's talking about it. I was wondering if any of that this game transferred into that um and just and try to see what what this game was because i hadn't played this yet so i was like yeah this would be a good time to get into it rise of ronin just came out but it is it is a lot it is very mechanically deep it's deep it is very fucking deep yeah that is I play a lot of games, right? Like we both do. This is probably one of the deepest games I've played, like ever. Yeah. It's like up there, dude. And I'm, I'm not talking just like system depth, but like mechanic depth too. Cause it's still an action game, so yeah. you have things like combos, dodge cancels. Like there's still stuff like that in there too. Like you have to focus on. Yeah, you like there's move sets. Like you can do actual like fucking like brawler game combos. <laughs> yeah uh and you can put like oh god it's crazy you can put like i remember some abilities can get like legendary effects you could attach to them kind of like the uh like the shrine not the shrine the uh the zo the, the the star sign stuff from grim dawn <laughs> yeah remember that there's, there's stuff like that too where you can get like these abilities and attach them to moves so when you do this move you could like Oh god, it's it's fucking crazy. Like I don't even want to get into that. Like there's like so much shit in here. Like it's it's fun though. Like it's a fun game, but the whole time you're playing, you can like fuck your build up because you're the game's hard as shit and I'm like is it hard because this is a hard part or is it because I fucked up my build? Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to know that it gets I haven't had much difficulty in the in the early sections. But the early sections aren't too bad. It's manageable, but the later sections can get tough and some of the optional missions can get just insanely hard. And I'm like, are these ins are these hard because they're just hard? Are they optional? I'm not supposed to be here yet. Or I can't tell with this. <laughs> once <laughs> like I once I found the once I found the fists, um I felt I felt a lot more comfortable with the with the fist weapons. Yeah um yeah it's like monster hunter you once you find the thing you once you find your weapon type i think you'll be like pretty good it's just the game gives you two weapons to like pick from and you can have them both be the same weapon the same type of weapon like two fists or you can mix it up like have one weapon and then another one to switch to yeah and there's like merit to doing both of those like if you just have like two like fists for example like two sets of fists one fist could be there to like do certain elemental damage another fist could just be straight like attack damage 
I didn't or one fist could do straight stamina damage. Another you know, straight, just straight physical damage. There's like a lot of shit here. I didn't even think of that. Right. Like it's there, there's so, or you could just have two separate weapons that two, two, do, do two separate things. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. And so some I'm... some loadouts like there, there's like some like sets that give you bonuses to have them all equipped, and some of them will have, like, two weapons. So there's this one that's, like, oh, here's, like, a sword and a spear and a whole set of armor. If you have all of them attack equipped, you get, like, a huge bonus. So there, there, there's a lot in this game, dude. So much in this game. It's crazy. Like, it's, it's exhilarating, but it's overwhelming, too. It can be very overwhelming. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely recommend this game. I yeah. definitely recommend it, especially if you get it, you know, humble, humble, humble dot com or whatever the fuck it is. Humble, get that, get that humble choice for this month, and um, I think it's twelve dollars for me because I was in the original. They've upped the price since then, but it's probably like fifteen or twenty. But even then, that's a good price for just this game alone. But you still get like five other games that are still, um. It's I'm a good ass game. It. Like I bought it like two years ago for like twenty five bucks, and I thought it was worth it. I liked it. I put thirty eight yeah. hours in it. I'm not even done with it yet. So it's definitely like we're just looking dollars per hour. Like it was worth it, but it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. And the first Neo was like that. I remember when like I played the first Neo because it was free on Epic, and I was like, "Wait a minute, this game's like a a Diablo like." Wait a minute. I remember telling you about that, and you're like, I didn't know it was a Diablo like. <laughs> the Diablo stuff is not even what I thought that would be the thing that would hook me, but I'm not even. That stuff's more just like background to like all the other fucking stuff that this game is doing, really, for me. Yeah, the skill tree stuff is like all borderline like Path of Exile skill trees. It's like. Yeah, yeah. It's like insane, dude. Like, it's, it's fun, though. Like, it's a fun fucking game. It's just. God damn it, it's a lot. And if you're not expecting it, like, it's gonna fuck you up, like... Yeah. Like, the game is gonna overwhelm you. So, yeah, check out... Check out Neo 2. Um, yeah, it's... League's better than Neo 1. Like, I liked it a lot more than Neo 1. I think I put, like... Like, eight hours into Neo 1 and got kind of bored of it. But it's not Neo One's fault because, like, I saw what Neo Two was doing, and I was like, "Fuck this game!" <laughs> <laughs> like, I was playing Neo One, and I was like, "Oh, this is pretty good." How's the sequel? And I saw like the sequel, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is this looks way better." It's doing every it's this but more. I'm gonna stop playing this and pick up Neo Two. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Also played that Diablo, the Diablo Four. Public test realm went live on Tuesday. Oh, for um, the new season? Yeah. How was so it? So I loaded that up just to take a little gander at it, just to mess around with it for a little bit. Um Yeah. It's nothing mind blowing. I mean what what they've done is they went and just refined parts of the experience that kind of needed a little refining. So Yeah the um affixes system basically there's like three things the affixes which goes into tempering items now tempering items and master working items cool. uh basically they've they've lessened the amount of affixes that can appear on an item to just three and th okay. there's no like there's no more affixes like while uh drinking wine on a sunday smoking weed on the full moon uh 13 percent chance to uh drain life from uh eat enemies type shit like lucky like, no, strike. yeah yeah <laughs> there's no more of that it's all just straight like if it's an armor piece it'll be like 14 percent more damage reduction and then it would be like two more like critical strike chance and shit like that. And it's just three of okay. those. You get okay. fucking three on every item. Or I guess a Good. legendary item will have like three. Right? And then you can go into tempering. So what now what you get is you can take an item to a blacksmith and you'll get um 
you'll just as drops just random drops uh, as you play you'll find these uh i forget what the fuck they're called like um tempering uh guides or something like that you use those and you learn you will learn more uh as uh arguments that you can put onto your equipment and you take those to the blacksmith and then you'll just roll for a chance to get any of those on your equipment you can put two up to two on like the highest tier of equipment so i think like the ancestral stuff you can add two affixes to uh to any piece of equipment but you can only like add that. two and then you can re-roll those up to five times so if you don't get the one you want you can re-roll it up to five times on any piece of equipment awesome and then so you can that. add then you can so you get up to five affixes on any piece of equipment then what you can do is you can take it into the master work and then what the master work does it takes any of those affixes and buffs any of those affi affixes randomly uh on any piece of equipment so if you i'm showing some footage here at like a 14 percent chance of like additional chain lightning on one if i take that into the master work it could like triple that chance i like that um so it sounds like they just like simplified everything which is great they simplified and... it and then gave you gave you a way to kind of just get the shit that you want you know yeah, instead I of like just that. praying that you fucking drop with it and then having to like re-roll it randomly on fucking everything you can just re-roll the very specific thing you want and um that's great it's great uh, how is it have you played a uh, grim dawn yet because they just had an update where they just like hey let's make the game more fun <laughs> yeah you know it's something similar like let's take out like all the, all the bullshit like affixes let's increase like mob density increase like legendary drop rate like have you played grim dawn since that update yet i did actually but not yeah. like i'd start a new character i didn't get very deep yet so to really see that stuff but yeah i did i did play it i did i did load it up and, and take a look but um i didn't get really deep enough to the the thing about the the public tests that they're doing is there's a guy in there almost like if you ever played like one of those world of warcraft private servers where they just like they'll like give you like a boost like there's just a guy <laughs> there's a guy there's an npc you just talk to and he's like hey boost me to level 100 and you just talk to him hit the button and you just it just does it just gives you level 100 it gives you a million fucking like a hundred million gold it just gives you fucking everything uh, yeah well the point of that server is to like test out how these changes work yeah, so yeah. you can see how it works like in the early game or in the end game like which yeah. is awesome like i like that i i, I would uh, like to join that but i'm like i could not like i don't have the time to like really look into it and play around with it and i'm kind of kind of got burnt out with their last season man like yeah, that season this is was dog more, shit. This this isn't for people who are just because I feel like the game core is like totally fine. You like you play that campaign, you get like twenty to thirty hours of just good video game for like the casual players. Yeah. But I think the real sweaty, you know, people like me, the fucking tryhards, are like it's the yeah, end game. The, <laughs> yeah, that's the that that's not the same way, dude. The end game is like what makes this game for me. Like that's yeah. And that's like, what that's, i'm playing to and that and that's the part that the you know the, the sweaty nerds are, are fucking like complaining about like that's the part that needs the work and like that's yeah. what they're doing here is they're, they're really this is really like a 1.0 update for that end game shit good good yeah i'm into it because I, I i was kind of like whatever with their first season i was like it's all right and then that second season that vampire one that was fucking awesome i love yeah. that yeah and then third season was just such a shit dude like oh my god they shit the bed with that season it was like <laughs> what the fuck like um, angry video game nerd here like what were you thinking <laughs> like what were they thinking ass like um, but seriously though i i went into that like this is not fun at all i did the first like treasure dungeon i was like this is ass i'm not i'm done with this i'm not having fun with this <laughs> so 
Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much like all there is to it, really. There's some refinement on like drops and crafting that that really that really needed updating. The the, the only other thing I looked at was I went into the Helltide, and yeah. they made the Helltide more like the Vampire Zones, yeah. in that there's significantly more mob density, and also when you're like there's like a GTA wanted level. So the more time you spend in there fucking shit up, the more shit they throw at you and you have like a Good. wanted meter that increases. And there's a fucking I don't they added this, I think, in this fucking update where there's like random shit that can happen. There's a giant worm that fucking comes out of the ground and just fucking shits out like a fuckload of enemies at you. And it's fucking awesome. When I saw that, I was like, holy shit, that's fucking awesome. Uh, See, that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. Give me that. I want more of that, please. But it has the literal. It has the literal vampire shit of like people can put shit into the the little uh, brazers or whatever the fuck and summon a uh, summon a mob, and then the mob fucking. And I think the more people that are there, the more enemies come out. Like it's like enemies per player. It's not just like here's a mini for the event it's like okay there's three players we're gonna have three fucking tiers of mob that are coming out good um yeah it's it's just like the vampire shit so that's exactly what i wanted out of that um yeah it's it's great like they just they've they've really honed things in on this so um they good, still man. they still See, haven't I'm revealed they still haven't revealed what the season four gimmick is yet so there's still that to, as to long see. as it's something that like that synergizes with what they're doing here, I'm okay with it. Like, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's 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 it seems like it's it's getting to where it's getting to like a 1.0 now, which is yeah, which is where it kind of needs to be. So, I'm uh I'm excited for it. It seems it seems good. I'm excited now too, then. <laughs> It'll probably get me back into it. Yeah, it's good they're fixing this now since uh, Diablo Four is on Game Pass. Like, yeah, yeah, that's really good. Man, I want to, I want to fucking play it now, but I know it's like not ready, so I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Man, that's good. That's really good. That's happening. I'm like really happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm really happy to hear like mostly good things about this update that's from my um, perspective as a not one yeah. of those fucking sweaty ass like i don't really i don't really get super deep into the end game of those games i kind of just play it just for fun uh because this fun to just kill shit in those games so yeah. that is my casual perspective on it but the 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 diehards seem to enjoy it as well more than that path of exile update path of exile just came out with their new season and they're saying it's like the worst season ever <laughs> oh that's bummer. that's a bummer <laughs> that's a huge bummer so yeah so. man that's a huge bummer like <laughs> oh well <laughs> sucks to be path of exile <laughs> yeah I don't have anything quite like that. I was playing, uh, I, I bought Persona 4 again. Yeah. It was on sale on Switch. So, Persona 4, Golden, and 3 Portable Remastered were on Switch for like 20 bucks. So I was like, all right, I'll get them. I like me some Persona 4. Persona 4 is a good game. It's a cozy game. Yeah, Switch is a good spot for those too. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I played like Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Portable on Vita. Like, that's how I originally played them. Yeah. And I own Four Golden on Steam. I, I bought that shit day one. And I was having fun with it, but I'm like, I don't have the time to like sit here and dedicate to this like at my desk. But it's a perfect portable game. Persona was it's like a perfect portable game. I don't care what anyone says. Like that game is perfect to be played on the go. Yeah, you just you load it up, do like a day or two in game and then yeah. just put it down. Or make a couple like levels in a dungeon and yeah. you can put it in sleep mode so you don't have to like turn the game off you just put it in sleep mode and then pick it back up when you're free again it's great so how, do you, perfect, how do you play those games because when i play them what i do is as soon as the dungeon opens up i do the entire dungeon up to the boss and then i quit uh and then i do like the 
the life sim stuff for like all of the days and then i go back into the dungeon and go straight through the so boss. when i when i first got persona 4 golden way back when i did i did that but i would take on the boss i would try to do the whole dungeon in one oh, sitting shit. yeah i would go through the whole dungeon twice i would go through the whole thing in one sitting you can't do that so much in the first dungeon because the first dungeon's like you don't have a full party yet and it's really fucking yeah. hard so you can't do that the first one you can probably get to like the end of it on the first one and then you'll have to like leave and then come back and do it later. But what I once I get the groove going, once I get like a full team of people, what I would do, and I did this with Persona Five too. Well, you don't have to do it so much with Persona Five, but for Persona Four, I run through the whole dungeon in one sitting, take out the boss. I would usually wait until like the very end so that I can't do it anymore. So until I can't put it off anymore, I would do it at the absolute last minute. That way I could still build up like my social links get those bonuses for it my team can get their like combat bonuses and then run through the whole dungeon take out the boss you know leave do some story shit and then halfway between either when the next dungeon unlocks or right before it run through the whole dungeon again because there's a secret boss at the end you can take on that gives you like extra xp and usually a, a unique what? item yeah uh, if you do it again, like before the next one starts, or just whenever. Or, oh, I don't know if I ever. You can just that. go and do it. You can just go and do it whenever you want. But I typically wait until the next one starts, or when the next one becomes available. Typically, when the next one becomes available, because I can run through. You don't have to run through the whole dungeon. You can just skip to the last floor. But yeah. I run through the whole dungeon again just to get that extra XP and with the shuffle time and stuff you can get like there are some shuffle time bonuses that are straight up just like increase this stat or level up your persona. So I would just do that in hopes of getting those bonuses. Run through the whole dungeon, take out that that mini that that mini boss or that secret boss, get that bonus, and then start up the next dungeon and try to finish that or get to the uh or if I can't finish it, I would leave and then come back and then do it and then get to the end and take on the boss. Uh -huh. But like, I try to squeeze that time. I try to spend as much time in dungeons as possible when it's available in like one sitting because I don't like wasting time. <laughs> yeah, no, I would do it all. I would do the whole thing on the first day, except I just wouldn't kill the boss. Cause I thought if you killed the boss, then you would like move on to the, I thought it would just progress, so I was like, okay, I can't kill the boss, because I gotta use it. It does, time. like, once you, once you kill the boss, it doesn't progress time, but it ends that day, so... If you spend one day doing the dungeon, and another day doing the boss, you burn through, like, two days. <laughs> because as soon as you kill the boss, it's like, okay, let's go back home and go to sleep. <laughs> so that's why I try to make it worth my while. The only time it doesn't do that is if you fight the secret boss. You can keep going, but a story boss, yeah, the game like ends it and it's like, hey, cool, go home, go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I try to push it as far as I can because during the social link stuff, right, you're getting that's the cool thing about Persona, man. You're not just like doing the life sim stuff to do life sim stuff, it, it feeds back into the dungeon crawling stuff. Like increasing your social link with your friends gives them abilities, stuff like follow up attacks. Um, at later levels, they have a chance to save you from an attack that kills you. So one thing Persona does that people hate, but I think is pretty cool, is if you're, if anyone dies in a fight, you can bring them back if you have the right items and a healing equipment. But if your main character dies, game's over. No chance to like come back. Yeah. So what's cool is if you level up your your friend's per social links high enough. They can unlock an ability where they'll save you from an attack that'll kill you. Yeah. Whether it's an instant kill attack or an attack that's going to wipe out the rest of your HP. Like, they'll shove you out of the way and take that hit for you. And I think that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's cool. But, yeah, I would... I hate, I hate <laughs> RPGs that fuck you when just the main character dies. Like, I still have a whole party here. And fucking just my guy dies and it's over. Like, I hate that. I always hated it. 
Yeah, it's it's still shitty, and it's not a good argument for it, but I think it's a cool mechanic because there's ways to circumvent that yeah. by working with your team. And you could argue, well, if there's a way to circumvent it, why even include it? Well, because it builds up on this like idea of friendship, right? Like, you're trying to build these connections with these people. Yeah. And you can build a connection where they'll literally like take a take a bullet for you. Like that's yeah. that's cool to me. That that's good theming. So I'm into it. But I know mechanically it's annoying and redundant mechanically, but feeding back into like the theme of the game I think is really clever. That's just me though. Uh Chie best girl. Chie's best girl, I agree. <laughs> yeah, no 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 contest there. Chie all the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. Also, <laughs> Persona 4 Golden's good, by the way. Just go play it. Like, it's a good-ass game. You know, you probably you probably got that from me talking about it, but it's a good-ass game. I love it. Yeah. I still like the story of Persona 4 Golden more than Persona 5. Um, also played Dragon's Dogma 2. Yes. A lot. I have, like, 20-plus hours in it. And I gotta say, man... I got mixed feelings. <laughs> ooh, ooh! It's it's a good game. Like it's fun in the sense that like it's everything Dragon's Dogma One was doing, but more. There's more mechanics, more abilities. Some people complain you get less active abilities, like which is annoying. Like you could get up to like I think like you can equip like six special attacks in the original game. This is only four. But a lot of those attacks that you could equip in the uh, older games are just part of your basic move set. So instead of having to assign, like, the fighter has a skill that lets you, like, knock enemies into the air. And instead of having to assign that to a skill and waste the skill slot for it, now you just hold the attack button to, to set it off. So it doesn't, it's not a skill you have to, like, actually actively equip. Yeah. So I think that kind of makes up for it. Because you're not having no, so you have less skill slots, but a lot of those skills you used to use in the first game are just part of your core move set. So I don't mind it too much. Some people were telling me that the magic users got fucked on that, but I haven't seen it yet. So, but goddamn, dude, it's fun. Like the way combat flows so much smoother. Animations change depending on the context. So if you use like a heavy attack, for example. That's going to change if you're, like, jumping at an enemy or standing still or running at them. It does the same thing. Like, it's a heavy stick with your sword, for example. But it's the animations change slightly to make it feel more dynamic. Uh, if it's the last hit on an enemy, you get this cool killing animation with it. It's There's so much to it that's so neat, dude. Um, the animations for the bosses are so cool. Climbing on top of them feels so much smoother now. It looks less janky. Like, it's a huge improvement over the first game on almost every way. Nice. But, but, the fucking performance is dog shit, dude. Oh, oh my shit. God. I gave up. I'm trying to play past 30. Because even with my 3060 that I upgraded to, man, I could still barely get it to be a consistent, like, 40. Like, it, it's, it runs at 60 to 75 just fine, but as soon as I go into, like, a town, that shit fucking tanks, dude. It's bad. Shit, man. It tanks to, like, 40, and it fluctuates from, like, 35 to, like, 45 sometimes. It never quite gets back up to, to 60 when I'm in a town. And I'm fucking around with all my settings, trying to change stuff. And it's just, it's not working, dude. And yeah, when I upgraded my 3060, I got maybe like five more frames out of it. In well, down, they, said it's a, they said it's a CPU issue, not yeah. necessarily a GPU. So Yeah, I didn't know that. I had to upgrade my GPU anyway, so I didn't mind it. But, but it's even the, then, it's dude, like I'm the running on the, an i9. Like, it's the way how the much game of utilizes the, shit. It just doesn't, it's not yeah. optimized. It's not optimized even well the, at even all. Even the consoles are fucked. I think they're putting out a patch for the consoles just is limited to 30. Like, they're not even That's, trying to, they're not even trying to make it hit 60. They're like, ah, oh, fuck it. We'll just, just cap it at 30. And they're like, fuck, dude. That's what I ended up doing, dude. I ended up just like, I, I, I would only play at 60. I would rather play at 60 at low to medium settings. It was consistent, but it's not even doing that. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to turn it to 30 
turn everything up and that's fine it's not fine but it's that's what i'm yeah. doing now yeah i have it at 30 i got like some settings on high um i have some light ray tracing on and i can hit 30 consistently it hasn't dropped below 30 so that's good yeah but yeah dude anything above that fucking it's 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 not working it's not working <laughs> I fucking hate it because I'd rather play at 60 and turn off like high fidelity graphics, turn off ray tracing, turn off uh, the higher mesh working. Uh, I would turn all that stuff down and play at 60. I'd rather do that, but that's not an option right now because it's not yeah. capable of hitting anything past like not hitting a consistent 60. I can hit a consistent 30 and turn some shit up. So that's what I'm doing now. And the game looks beautiful, but fuck. I, it's so annoying to play. It's so annoying. Um, it's so annoying. It's so fucking annoying. But it's it's a it's a fun game though, and that's the thing that drives me fucking nuts. It's a fun game that has some cool ideas here. The way stuff works off of each other, it's very people throw this term around a lot. But it's very Breath of the Wild like in the way that the mechanics work off of each other. Yeah. It's a so there's a systems. there's a yeah there's a skill one of my pawns used that they summon like a fucking pillar of ice out of the floor it was like some random pawn i got from the uh the rift they summon this huge pillar of ice out of the floor and i can climb on top of it and used to get to higher places if i wanted to and once it breaks it leaves these ice cubes around that i can throw at enemies like it's pretty neat and but i've been told there's like even more stuff you can do with that if like you're playing a sorcerer character there's even more shit you can do like that combining skills together to like reach higher places and get around certain obstacles and even the fighters got some skills too dude i can like i can throw people up with my shield now i think you did that in the first game but it's it's cool it looks cooler now and if and if a, one of my pawns is under me, when a monster throws me off of it, they can catch me, and I won't take any fall damage. Like it's really cool the way this stuff works, yeah. man. And just like the first game, like if you're standing in water and use a lightning skill, guess what? It's gonna fucking hurt you. So it's it's really cool the way this stuff works off of each other. And characters have their own like urgency. Like there's this quest. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's this quest where this guy has two wives. And I thought I played it like a normal RPG. It's like, which wife do I want to let know? You know, what, how am I going to do this? Can I, like, tell which wife do I tell he's cheating? And, or do I just tell him and then have him bribe me to, like, leave him alone? But someone, I, I saw a video where somebody, like, picked up one of the wives, carried her over to the other wife, and they started talking. And they started slapping the fuck out of each other, and then they started <laughs> attacking him. <laughs> oh shit! And I'm like, I didn't even know that was a possibility in this game. Fuck, man, that's what like, I it's, love it's... about like that's that's one of the truly next gen things to me. Even though it's not next gen really, but the like systems integration, the fucking yeah, the Breath of the Wild, the uh, um, synergy, sy yeah, synergy shit. And and same thing with like Metal Gear Solid Five, just the way that systems can interact with each other in in crazy fucking ways. Um, that's really to me the most exciting thing that's come from most any almost anything in, in recent memory is just integration on on systems at that level. Uh, to where you can think like, ah, I wonder if I can do this, and then you just try it, and it's like, oh shit. It, it just works you know yeah dude it's cool and there's like i'm finding i'm just, just running around exploring people shit out of not having fast travel but okay like let's let's put on that really quick there's some minor fast travel you can yeah. go to ox carts and pay them to take you to certain places depending on what area you're at that'll tell which ox cart you can get they'll they'll, they'll tell you i'm going to melv i'm going to benworth 200 gold is a fair and you can hang out on the ox cart you can watch it play in real time or you can fall asleep and wake up and you're there it's like or the, enemies uh, can attack you. from morrowind sure <laughs> and i never played morrowind so i don't know but you can get attacked on the way there though and you can help out 
You can get leave the cart whenever you want. There's a lot to it here. Not every, not every area has a cart, which is fucking annoying. I'll admit that. Not everyone has a cart. It's very fucking annoying. But it's not this like obnoxious thing. And the the, the, the honestly, most of the fun comes from just like exploring, letting yourself explore, find out some shit. I some of the most memorable parts of the game for me have been not from like quests i couldn't tell you really a memorable quest but i can tell you the time a cyclops busted out of a wall and tried to attack me and then i ran across a bridge and he broke the bridge and landed on it so like he fell caught himself between the two like cliffs that the bridge was connecting and i just like attacked his fingers and he fell and died i can tell you that story yeah i can tell you the time like a bandit tried to attack me and i threw him in the water and a bunch of like fish ate him like i can tell you that that's the thing because the game is built for that that's why there's no that's why like the fast travel options are limited is so you can experience go on like like, on these adventures because you could say people say the same thing about something like skyrim and you could like you could not fast travel in that game sure but it's such a reduced experience because that game isn't built to not fast travel you know it's not it's not built in that way so like the experience of doing that is just so much more negative yeah dude than... and like th- that that's how this is like it's not it can be annoying yeah like when you we have to go between one town to another and one of both the towns don't have an ox cart to travel from like that can be annoying but if you just let yourself enjoy it take your time it can be really fun and rewarding the shit you discover i got attacked by this random slime monster i've never seen before and i went to like fight it and my stam i started moving at like a quarter speed and my stamina just started dropping and i was like oh fuck (laughs) <laughs> What's gonna happen? My stamina hits zero. My stamina hits zero. My HP starts dropping. And oh, I'm like, shit. oh no! And one of my pawns like runs in and pulls me out. <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, Arisen, are you okay? And I'm like, I am now. <laughs> that thing almost fucking ate me. God, I, I and I'm wish like they figuring had out what to multiplayer, dude. Like, I, I do too. But some of the stuff these pawns create is so interesting. Like. Yeah. That slime story, like he pulled me out of it. I'm like, okay, so attacking it, it's not going to do anything. Because if he catches me, I'm fucking dead. So I'm standing back trying to watch it. My pawns are trying to, like, I have one pawn shooting arrow at it. So it's not doing anything. Another pawn's, like, hitting it with magic. It's doing some damage, but it's not doing a lot. I'm like, fuck, what do I do? So I'm running around this, like, cave. And I find, like, an explosive barrel. And I'm like, okay, let me try that. I pick it up and throw it at him. It explodes. The shit starts fucking screeching. And it starts bubbling, and then it fucking pops like a bubble. <laughs> and flashes red light everywhere. One of my pawns is like, their weakness is fire. And I'm like, okay, now I know. Fire stuff fucks it up. Like, it's so cool the way these mechanics, like, work off of each other. And, and then once I killed it, it dropped, like, items. And it was uh, oil slime is what it was called. I'm like, okay, so it's an oil slime. That's why it's like weak to fire and i can combine that oil side with rotten meat and make lantern oil like it's (laughs) nice like it's so cool dude like it's so cool the way this stuff like works off of each other everything has like a purpose if i kill a lizard man i think they're called sorens and cut off its tail i can take its tail mix it with one of the medicines i made and it makes the medicine better like it's it's so cool watching the stuff work off of each other (laughs) And watching my pawns like talk and interact it's and the game like doubles down on that so like after a fight some pawns will stand there with their hands up so you can high five them like it's really cool man like it's really really cool <laughs> yeah i, I really want to play this but it's fun but the performance is yeah, oh god it almost ruins it for me it almost ruins shit. it for me they came out they came out with some like statements like yeah we're gonna we're gonna fix well not fix but <laughs> here's what we're gonna do to kind of address some of this shit but we're not gonna really fix anything we're gonna add a you can start a new game without or something like add a new game option to the menu 
I was like, yeah, I didn't yeah. even know it wasn't there, honestly, because like <laughs> I booted it up, I played through the game, I'm still playing it, and they're like, we're gonna add a new game option. I was like, wait, that's not there, and I checked yeah. the menu, and like, yeah, sure enough, it wasn't there. Like, yeah, I'm that not really me. Hyped to start new games, but yeah, I guess it for it should be there. It should be. But yeah, that that's it's a fun game despite like all the hiccups, dude. And if you if you want to be honest, like. No other game's really doing what this one's doing, so that's why I kind of give it a pass. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same reason why I give like Bethesda a pass for their sh- fucking shitty games, is because like no one, no one does what they do. So I can kind of be like, ah, they're, you know, they're kind of outliers in this whole thing. No one's making this game, so like I kind of I I excuse them for that a little bit. But at the same time, they've been making that game for fucking over like, you know, like two decades. So yeah. Dragon's Dragon's Dogma, they've made this game before. It's kinda inexcusable for it to have the same mistakes that that first game had, you know? Well that that's what's funny. It doesn't have the same mistakes the first game has. It has new mistakes. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, it has some stuff that I feel like they could have learned from that first game or at least like enhanced a little bit like i don't know i they could have they could have fucking done some real ass multiplayer and yeah this, i and agree. That fucking send it over the top for me i'd have been like i'm buying this regardless of how shitty it is uh you'd think so but the way it's built it's built for the the pawn system so yeah. The the improvements they made to that are great. Like I love the improvements they made to that. I really do. Like the pawns are a lot more responsive. They're less brain dead than they used to be. They're a lot more helpful. Um, there's more incentive to like, get your pawn out there and have people use them. But they added this one thing, dude, that scares the shit out of me that I found out existed from like a random YouTube video. Have you heard of uh, Dragon's Blight yet? No. Have you heard about that? There's this weird system in the game. Your pawn can get sick and catch some illness going through the rift. Your pawn can get it by going through the rift, getting infected, or if you bring a pawn that's already infected, they can infect your pawn. Now, the, the, the symptoms are in very subtle ways. Your pawn gets a nasty attitude, won't listen to what you tell them, their eyes start glowing red. And if you wait too long to do something about it, which there's no cure to it, by the way, the only way to cure it, quote unquote, is to throw your pawn in water and kill them and then respawn them and they'll respawn without the infection. There's no item or anything that makes it go away. But if you don't get that in check, when you rash that in, in the pawn, and I shit you not, dude, you can look this up. Your pawn will turn into a giant black dragon and kill everyone in that town. <laughs> what everyone everyone including quest important characters <laughs> wait will it just kill them or do you have a chance to like fight it no it kills them <laughs> it plays an animatic where they turn into this dragon thing and it says and there's like some some like dialogue i saw it happen on a, a video there's like some dialogue and then you wake up and then everyone's dead the whole fucking town is empty Wow. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing too. It is it's you can mention that it's a dumb design decision. I agree, it is. But it's not like this stuff's lost forever. One cool thing about this game, and I learned this recently, is you can bring back any NPC from the dead. You have to have what's called a wake stone. Now, the wake stones are typically used to bring back your uh, your pawns if they die. But if you go to a morgue and you have a wake stone, you can choose any NPC you want to use that wake stone on and bring them back from the dead. So if that oh. happens and you got a wake stone, you can't. I mean, you're not gonna bring back the whole town. Those things are fucking hard to find. Yeah. But you could bring back like very like quest specific characters for example so you can keep playing the game maybe but yeah that's 
that's a thing that could happen. And I didn't know that. And now that I know it, I'm fucking constantly on the lookout for this shit. <laughs> because keep in mind, the game auto saves when you sleep at an inn. <laughs> so once you do that, <laughs> there's no saves coming to oh, bring yeah. those people back. Like, that's it. You got to live with that choice. <laughs> And until recently, there's no new game mode. So, yeah, you were stuck with that that file, <laughs> which is like insane to me. I would have preferred if it did that. And like you said, like there's a chance to like fight it, and you know, and then maybe some characters could die while you're fighting it. Maybe. Yeah. I think I would have been okay with that a little bit. Made the symptoms more obvious. Because I've been, I've been told it's really easy to, like, ignore it if you're not paying attention to it. So now I'm, like, constantly, like, waiting for my pawn to, like, backtalk me. And then he's going in a river. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I respect the balls to do that. Because fucking... Yeah. Like, even, like, Starfield, which has a... Which has built into the game a way to just reset everything uh built into the fucking game that you would think they would allow you to just fucking kill everybody and then be like oh well you killed a quest in bc you can't do this quest now and then just reset just do the new game plus and then you can do it again and even they don't let you fucking do anything like that so yeah i, res I respect the the balls yeah there, there's respect i, I respect it but I'm still a little it's it's annoying that it's a thing but yeah there's some balls to make a choice like that that's what I mean this game is filled with like design choices that you're like no conventional triple a game would do this but they they have a specific image in mind of what this game is going to play like what this game is going to look like and god damn it they're sticking to it like they are sticking yeah. to it and and that's why i, I respect that too i respect them yeah. i respect when uh when a, a developer or like game director has a vision in mind that's what i love about kojima right it's what i love about death stranding for example like you might not you might not like that game but you can't fucking say that it's not memorable as fuck like in the past you can talk about whatever game of the year you want but death stranding i will remember for the rest of my life just because yeah. of how fucking insane it is and its dedication to what it does uh that i just respect that a lot more than any fucking horizon game of the year bullshit or spider-man yeah. so any game created by committee yeah 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 like I I under I get it, but this goes back to what I was saying before. You know, right? There's games that everyone's gonna like, and games a lot of people are gonna love. And Dragon's Dogma Two falls in that category. This is a game that everyone's gonna like, but a lot of people are gonna love. And I, I'd rather play that game. Yeah. And again, there's some the balls to make these these choices and have you live with them is like it, that's cool to me. Now, this goes into my next topic here, the pay-to-win stuff. Now, yeah, there's a lot of accusations of Dragon's Dogma 2 being pay-to-win. It's not. It's absolutely not. People who complain that, like, oh, the Deluxe Edition gives you all these bonuses, it gives you this, like... One big complaint I saw, you can, you can make camp in the game, okay? And the camping equipment is fucking heavy. And for a game that has limited inventory space, that can get really obnoxious. But you have to carry one around if you want to, like, camp somewhere. This camping helps you pass time. Um, it, you can eat at camp and get a boost to your stats. You can change around your skills that you've already had purchased. You can do a lot at camp. And if you have the Deluxe Edition, it gives you this, like, this nice camping set that weighs, like, almost half as much as a base one. Along with, like, some Rift Crystals and... Um, what else? Oh, a token that lets you like change your character, so you can like go back into the character creator and edit your character again. And you can buy this stuff separately if you don't have the deluxe. You can buy all these resources separately, and that set off a lot of people. Oh, the game with microtransactions, pay to win. Here's the thing: that camping set, 
you can get that from a quest a couple hours into the game. All this does is give you a head start with it. Yeah. I only bought the deluxe edition because I had some extra money. Uh, a buddy of mine gave me some money for my birthday, and then another buddy of mine gave me a Steam gift card, and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'll just, like, get this deluxe edition. Like, that, that's what I'll use this money on. And it made the game a little bit easier, yeah, but I was a little disappointed when I found the same exact, like, camping set a couple hours later. And a couple hours after that, I found a better one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not that big a deal. As for, like, the Rift Crystals, Rift Crystals, you can kind of argue, are pay to win. Because you can use Rift Crystals to buy pawns. When you go to get a pawn from the Rift, it doesn't cost anything if the pawn is at your level or lower. But if you want to get stronger pawns, like, that are stronger than your level, you got to pay Rift Crystals to do it. So you could argue, oh, I can get all these Rift Crystals and just, like, get a high-level pawn and breach through the game. You could do that, but why? <laughs> the game's not fun after that. Like, why would you want to do that? And you could also use Rift Crystals to buy some items from the, uh, the pawn. I think it's called the pawn. Um, God damn it, what was it called? The pawn guild. You can buy items like special cosmetic items, uh, like armor sets that don't really do anything, they just look kind of cool. Uh, gl stuff like glasses, if you want to wear glasses, you can buy them from this uh, pawn, from the pawn guild. Um, you can even buy some, um, some of these tokens that lets you change your character model, or that lets you edit your character. Which, honestly, the game lets you, you can download the character creator for free. Make your character exactly how you want them to look before you even buy the game. So, unless you're like your someone who wants to keep changing the way your character looks, I don't see much of a reason to like buy this. Yeah. And what else are people complaining about? There's a couple other things people complaining about. Like, is it annoying to see that there? Yeah, yeah, it is. But the game well, doesn't like tell you about it in the middle of the I game. Like, it doesn't. The, the actual problem is that people saw all that stuff who didn't like play the game so there was a lot of misinformation going around that the only way to do that shit was to buy it and a lot of people parroted that shit who were not who had no idea how the fucking game worked that you could just get that shit in game normally so they were saying oh you had to buy it to fucking do to get any of it which is, is not the case yeah and that, that you're right that's not the case um Another one that, one that does annoy me though, and I'll admit I haven't looked this up. There's a microtransaction by port crystals. Now port crystals are, um, so we use the fast travel to call fairy stones. You toss them up in the air and it transports you to a port crystal. You could only teleport to places that have these port crystals. And there's two types. There's a set port crystal. So like some towns will have one just built into the town. And there are, like, portable port crystals you can take with you and place them wherever you want to make it a fast travel point. Now, you can buy port crystals for Dragon's Dogma for $2.99. I'll admit, in my 20-plus hours playing the game, I haven't found any port crystals that I can just take in my inventory. Yeah. I found some set ones that are already set at towns, but I couldn't find any that I can, like, take with me. From what I remember about um, the first game, there's only... For each playthrough, there's a set amount of port crystals that you can even yeah. find. Yeah, there's so, a finite amount of them. So I'm not surprised I haven't found them yet. Yeah. But so far, I haven't had a, a need for port crystals yet. Because the towns that have them, the towns that don't have them usually have ox carts that I can just, like, take to. So it's not that big a deal. Like this complaining of like oh you gotta buy these port crystals yeah that's annoying like there is a finite amount of those in the games so to charge people money for that that that's that that's shitty i'll be honest there that's dog shit that should not be a thing but like i was mentioning earlier, the game is built around not having fast travel a lot of times it's more fun to run somewhere on foot and then just discover shit along the way yeah 
Like that's fun. At least to me, it's fun. So that that's so my defense the, of it. The 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 argument <sighs> the argument. So what sparked this for me was Josh Drive Hayes, YouTuber, put out a video called "What Is Pay to Win." And that's like 30, 40 minute video or something like that. But he he, he brings up a lot of people slam this video. <laughs> people really slam this video just because he because he does himself in this video make the erroneous comparisons with uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 and that the only way to do it is to like buy it, which is not true. But he came out and corrected himself. But it, it, in the video, it's the, the rest of the video is very, very fucking well done in that there's a lot of nuances to the what is pay to win you know yeah which i think the term pay to win is like not it's not entirely accurate for what it is because what it really is is like pay for advantage really because you're not necessarily paying to win you're paying to make the thing easier um and it could be in a game it could be in a multiplayer game which is i think how most people associate that but it could be like single player too like not like you can't win in a single player game but you can sure as fuck pay for like an advantage in any game uh and that advantage doesn't necessarily make you win all the time yeah. you know so i think like the way i use pay to win is like pay for advantage and that advantage could be take any form it could take form as like i paid for the strategy guide like i consider strategy guides to fall under that uh to fall under that category the pay, the pay to win category yeah i agree yeah yeah or i've never heard that argument before but i agree see, even like uh even like you you paid for like the deluxe edition like that even in itself could be like considered a pay to win because you got it you got to think like even the existence of you might not it might not be like the port crystal shit might not be a, a super huge advantageous thing but, but it, it is, is an something like yeah it is an advantage and it's something that they have to design the game they have to take in mind when they're designing the game that and oh they're, they're selling this stuff so they have to kind of design the game. Maybe, maybe they don't, but in the back of the designer's minds are like, oh, we have to make these things desirable from a, now when we're designing the game, we have to make, take into account that we're selling this stuff and we have to make the stuff we're selling desirable to the player. So we have to design our game in a way that maybe it's not super fucked, but we have to make them want to purchase this stuff so they have to design the game in, in a slightly more different way than they would have otherwise if that stuff was not available at all you know yeah so you do have to take that into account like maybe the maybe there's so few in game is because they are selling this stuff to make it more desirable maybe but that comes to, it depends on the design though because like anytime you have something you can sell there is going to be that question is, well, how hard is it to get in the main game? Like, yeah. even though I went through all the stuff, like, you know, the, the, the fucking, the camping set, for example, that I was mentioning, you know, yeah, the people saying like, this is the only way to get this camping set. It's, it's misinformation and me actually downplaying like how easy it is to really get it. And I found a better one, like a couple hours later. The fact that it's they're selling it with a deluxe edition, yeah, that that, that can cause the 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 optics don't look good, <laughs> and that's where that misinformation comes from. So I'm yeah. not gonna blame people for falling into that misinfo because then why would they sell it if you can just get it in the game that easily? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like what's more logical? Like, oh, they're selling this thing, we don't have to buy it because you can get it pretty easily in the game, or they're selling this thing because it's the only way to get it is to buy it with real money yeah. like you know what sounds more believable you know <laughs> and that's the problem with the uh, pay to win mechanics you know from from your definition you know, pay to advantage because they they create this like stigma you know of what it means to have that just having it in a shop creates so much um how can I word it? Creates so much uh, 
negative feedback. You know what I mean? Like just just the optics of having that available just looks really fucking bad. Yeah. And it causes people to to interpret why that's there and you know, the use of it and there's so much there's so many issues with it that it's better just not to have it. I would prefer to just not have it in the shop to be honest with you. Because yeah. when I've been playing, like it hasn't been an issue. Airy stones, you can buy them separately, but the game gives them out to you pretty frequently. I haven't had to buy a fairy stone at all, and I have like six of them, just from the game giving them to me from like missions and finding them and exploring the world. But I can see how some people are like, if you want to buy them, it's like 8,000, 10,000 gold in game, which isn't hard to get, but it's a good chunk of change where I can pay like a dollar and get one. Like, I can see like where people come to that those conclusions. Yeah, and it sucks. And it's just stuff again. It, it it's like negative optics because now you're looking at the game in a different way, to yeah. where it's like, like in the video now, it's he's bringing up like the horse armor thing, and yeah, even if it's just even if it's purely cosmetic, you still in the back of your mind are going like, oh, they're selling these cosmetics, but what if they've what if all of the cool cosmetic shit are they've taken out of the game and are now trying to sell it to me? You know, yeah. like now I can't actually get any of the really cool shit because they've re- re- separated all of that out into like microtransactions. Yeah, that's one and... of the reasons I fucking hated Mortal Kombat 11 so much because they did that shit. <laughs> they were like, oh, here's instead of like, here are these cool designed costumes, right? Oh, now you could like unlock like gear to strap onto your character. Some of them have different stats, some of them don't change anything. But just the fact that that's there is like obnoxious. Cause then I went from like having these cool designed costumes to this like just garbage they put together to make me feel some feedback loop of, you know, play, 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 loot, loot, loot in a fucking fighting game <laughs> like come on yeah yeah like i will I argue mean, i had more fun with moral combat x than i did with 11 because of st- stuff like that um and, and again it creates the, these optics like because it started making me think like, look what we lost to get this because now they can't just have this cool costume for this character and now it's like like a gear set now yeah. That I can like mix and match and it looks like shit. And all it does is make me like upset that like the old game had better cosmetics, even though there's more cosmetics in this one. Cause none of, none of them are designed to be this like this one cool costume. It's like, oh here's like some random pauldron or some random chess piece or a random helmet or glasses and it looks like shit. <laughs> like god damn it, I fucking hate it. <laughs> Man, I fucking hate that Mortal Kombat did that, but that's <laughs> that's what I mean. Like just having that shop there and having it take out, because like you know you can't just keep these cool costumes and still have this gear set. Like no, they got to take it out, and it's stuff like that can create really bad optics here. Because it did it for me. I hated Mortal Kombat 11 a little bit. I played the story. I finished it. But I will argue that I had more fun, more rewarding experiences with Mortal Kombat X in 11 because of that. And it's such a bummer they brought that back for uh, for uh, the new Mortal Kombat game. They did the same shit. They didn't learn their lesson because they made money off of it. People bought these cosmetics. People are buying the fucking seasonal fatalities. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not pay to win per se. It's not an advantage per se, but just having that in a cash shop, like, you know... It's not, it doesn't feel good. It's bad optics. Like, yeah. Instead of just being able to unlock it normally in the, in the game or like for fuck's sake, like they, they sell, they sell basically what amounts to like a cheat code. They're just selling it to you. And then, you know, they'll put like De Nuvo in the game. So you can't actually just use cheat engine or something to effectively do the same thing as like, give yourself more, whatever, like port crystals or something like, Oh you yeah, use cheat engine to do something like that, but they're like, ah, no, we're gonna put the Nuvo on it 
you can't use cheat engine and then we'll sell you the thing that you were going to use it to do anyway right and those optics make it look really bad because if you're someone who already like fuck this i'm not gonna buy a port crystal i'm just gonna cheat engine use cheat engine to get into the game yeah and they have the nouveau there to stop you from doing it it's like oh see that's exactly what this is they just want to nickel and dime me yeah. which might not be the case they probably legitimately just have cheat engine on there to like or to nouveau on there to make sure that they sell their game legally which whole other can of worms you know doesn't really work <laughs> that well but for yeah. sake of argument let's say that wasn't the intention the intention was just no, I just want people to to buy this game legitimately. Yeah. You know, no one's gonna no one's gonna think that. No one's gonna think that. They're gonna think, oh, they did this for my single player game, so I can't play my single player game the way I want to, so I'll spend money on their microtransactions. Which might be the case, might not be, but that's not people are gonna gravitate towards the negative thing. Yeah. And that that's what I mean. Like even playing Dragon's Dogma 2 myself, which is a game I like. I wish that shop wasn't there because it really does create a really bad idea of this game. And people go and they review bomb it who've never played the game because it has these microtransactions. But and there's, there's, there's a lot of misinformation there. It's also a $70 game, yeah, and it has these microtransactions. Like, like I can see people being upset about it. But that that that's where it gets so weird now with the day in gaming that we're in, because like, how much does that stuff upset you? You know, it's going to determine like whether you buy the game or not. Like, yeah, I like the game. I can play through it without having to touch anything in the cash shop. Again, I got the deluxe edition, but it didn't give me that big of an advantage. It didn't turn like easy mode on or anything like that. It gave me a smoother head start, I'll be honest there. And honestly, I bought it because like I had the extra cash. I was like, fuck it, I'll just get the deluxe edition. I didn't even know what it came with. But that's it. If you did if you did want an easy mode, you would have to effectively just buy it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they take out the the setting and the options menu that's the easy mode and just sell you what would amount to an easy mode uh yeah basically yeah you know that's why that's why i appreciate like a lot, a lot of people want to talk shit about forespoken but um that game it literally has options in the menu that's like hey just give me infinite health just give me fucking infinite everything just give me uh just make the game easy it literally has toggleable options in the menu and i'm like that's fucking awesome dude because a lot of motherfuckers are selling you this shit you know, they're removing these options and then selling it back to you. Whereas, like, Forspoken just puts it in the fucking game. It's like, just give me infinite health. Give me infinite energy. Give me infinite magic or whatever. Just let me turn it on. Yeah. You know, let me enable story mode. You know, like, Horizon does that. Where it's like, just give me story mode as a difficulty. Um, Like, I appreciate that stuff. For people who just don't want to... I ended up turning that shit on in Horizon Zero Dawn. I was like, I don't like this game. <laughs> I'm just going to turn on yeah. story mode and just get through the story, which is the part that I actually enjoy about it. Yeah, yeah and that's that, That's what I mean. Like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we had before, it feels like they're cutting it off and selling it to us, which yeah, valid argument to make. Like, and then you have games that do it right, like Helldivers. Like, that's a great live service game that has great live service microtransactions that don't feel invasive, that don't feel, like, predatory. And we, we heard, you know, we were told that, like, oh, all these, like, seasonal content, like, take your time. We're not going to take it away. <laughs> like, that's yeah. awesome. And it's also not a full-price game. And also, they they're keep coming with updates that yeah. at least you can see where that money's going. Yeah. Like, even Power World, Power World just showed, like, they, they, they have got a raid going on now, and they just put out a bunch of, like, update notes for the next update that's like, holy shit, you guys are actually, like, at least at least if you're gonna sell me shit, let me see where that money is going. Like, give me some fucking updates yeah. that I can at least see what that you're doing something with this money and not just give me a bullshit product. That, and the product is already, like, fucking Dragon's Dogma at least get, like fucking fix the fucking game you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> like give me 60 fps or like something 
I can see you, like, what you're doing with this money instead of just going like, ah, we're going to add a new game and then we're going to put a frame rate cap because we can't fix the fucking game. Uh, yeah. Type like shit. It's, it's obnoxious. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean, dude. Like, we'll, we'll... And there's a lot to like about Dragon Song, but there's a lot to like shit on. And yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to shit on. I have no problem shitting on it. But... It sucks that, like, a lot of the cool stuff the game does was completely, like, bogged down by the microtransaction controversy. For good reason. Like, a lot of it was warranted. A lot of it was just overreaction, but a lot yeah. of it was warranted, too. Yeah. And it's such a bummer to see that. Um, hopefully, though, like, well, not even hopefully, like, if it made any money, if people actually bought this stuff, like, I bought the Deluxe Edition. So, you know, people like me who just like, oh, I have some extra money, I'll buy it. Like, like it makes it worth it to do that. Like, <laughs> so it's not going to go away anytime soon. And people forget, too, Resident Evil had a lot of these, like, microtransaction stuff, too. I mean, all of Capcom like, games had all of that shit. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a problem for Dragon's Dogma because, like, what people interpret from it. Um... Yeah, man, it's it's a bummer. Like, and they're not the only like Ubisoft's been doing it. Ubisoft, especially, every single Ubisoft game has that shit. <laughs> every oh, single yeah. one. Every single one. Yeah. So, I was playing fucking Far Cry Five, not the newest one, the one before that. Yeah, Five. Bro. And it has a cash shop with its own specific like. It's own uh, specific uh, resource you have to use. Not resource. Um, what's the term? Currency. Yeah, it's own currency. And I was like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> wh why?" And there's like exclusive weapons in there you can get this currency. Now you can find the currency in the game, which is pretty cool. But still, it's like it's so jarring. Like, yeah, but it's all know, shit. It's it's just like Dragon's Dogma, where it's all shit that you just you can get. And it's like it's, it's always shit that you just don't need to buy because you can get yeah. a lot of it aside from like the cosmetic shit but they sell like boosters and shit where it's like you can just play the game and get this shit but you can also just buy it if you just want to skip and it's like eh like you don't have to sell this shit man but I you know there's some people who just have more money than time that just wants to yeah skip that shit and like you know that's yeah. fine for them but you know, wouldn't yeah. you rather have just the option to just not just for it to be in the game, just have an option that's like, hey, just um, you know, remember cheat codes? Remember just enter in R one, yeah. R two, L one, and just get the fucking money, get the weapons. Like that shit was great. Yeah, man, that that's. I don't think we're gonna get back to those days, but we'll see what happens, man. Gaming is getting too expensive, and too you know uh volatile i think now yeah they're they're like a lot of developers are pushing and pushing and pushing what they can monetize and a lot of fans are pushing back on it and it's like strictly business now it's like really not an art anymore and we're seeing it's not working <laughs> like you know yeah. there's that there's that announcement that when sony made that their games didn't make that much money like yeah compared to how much it cost to put them together and we saw a bunch of like a bunch of game companies like laying off people because of that. Yeah. So I'm thinking that bubble might have burst, and then we're seeing double A games, you know, like Hell Divers Two, like doing the stuff super well and making a very critically acclaimed game and still making money on a constant revenue stream. Um, a game like Boulder's Gate Three, that you know, granted that that's a uh, that game had to go through like fucking years of early access but we're seeing like smaller double a teams making this stuff work and i think that's what's the, the next big shift is gonna be it's gonna be a shift in like double a games they're gonna be making the games that people want to play yeah. and I, I think that's what like microsoft's plan is as well is to just make cheaper games put them out on everything so you can like maximize that revenue uh yeah, that's how it used to be <laughs> like, yeah, yeah so we'll see what happens like i want to see games that do cool shit now they have the technology to do cool shit no one's doing it so yeah. let's, let's let that happen man look at hell divers like it's it's so cool that 
they have a living breathing game here with like a fucking game master that calls everything's behind the scenes like the story being told through the game is being told through like the war effort and that's so neat to see like yeah. let's see more of that i want to get back let's into that at some that. point me too it's been a while since i played it but it's like it takes some effort man i i, I say yeah. that uh <laughs> helldivers 2 is a very lean forward game yeah you get when sweaty. i get home from work i just want to lean back when i get home yeah. from work man so yeah but it's a fun game and it does a lot of things right um next topic game reviews and the acceptance of mediocrity this is something i i've noticed too man like if you guys haven't read this uh this reddit post yet rip cobain makes a very good point uh i'm not gonna read the whole thing but Dude, i actually disagree with <laughs> yeah. i actually disagree with, with this point so i uh, agree to a certain extent that a lot of major game reviewers are really quick to give out like 80s and 90s for games that seemingly don't deserve it and we just kind of accept it you know that's why i don't get my reviews from that i get my reviews from like smaller youtubers like i if i want to know about a, a shooting game like a first person shooter i listen to what g-man lives has to say about it if i want to yeah. hear about a horror game i'll listen to um what uh sphere hunter has to say about it or any capcom game really i'll listen to what sphere hunter has to say about it um I, I typically watch reviews that don't have like a numerical score to them because yeah. what I'm willing to put up with and what you're willing to put up with are very different things, right? Like, like look at Doom. Like, I think Doom is an incredible game, but you need to let people know, like, hey, there's a lot of systems here. You have to make decisions on the fly. And you, I loved it for that. You hated it for that, right? <laughs> like, yeah, same thing with like Hi Fi Rush. I felt like. But that's the but that's the thing. So I, I feel like when it comes to reviews, a lot of people just look at that score and just make their and then forming their opinions on that. I feel like I feel like the scores only exist for fucking console warring and and just debates and arguments and shit. Like the score is has no use. Like the purpose of a review for me, at least, the purpose of a review should be to make a purchasing decision um and it's really the content of the review that you need to yeah. pay attention to not the score at all like the score is completely irrelevant yeah to the to the content um, yeah like i i feel like the guy that wrote this post is like going based purely based on score alone and not at all on context or content of the yeah, review yeah that, that's something i've noticed too like I feel like a lot of reviews get overinflated, but at the same time, if you look at like what people are putting up with, you know, something that might take a game down to zero for one person might not for another, and that that's where things get like tricky. Like, yeah. So if I can if I can watch a, a review, so th I, I typically don't watch fucking reviews at all, right? So, um, recently I watched I watched two IGN reviews right i watched their south park snow day one which they gave a three <laughs> and then i watched their call of duty warzone mobile review which they gave an eight uh now you look at those scores and you're like this is fucking crazy <laughs> like the scores are insane but so but you read the you go into the content and what I found was that actually going through the content of those reviews, I was like, oh, holy shit. I actually, it, it actually makes me want to play that Call of Duty game. That Call of Duty game actually sounds really good, right? Interesting. Uh, yeah. But when you look at the score, all you would see is like, you can go to like their YouTube page and like look at the comments on that review. And people are like, wow, they gave this an eight. There really is April Fool. They put it out on April Fool's Day. So people are like, wow, an eight on this Call of Duty mobile. It really is April Fool's Day, huh? Uh, there's people just slamming that review because they gave it an eight and then actually read or like listen to this fucking review. Like it sounds actually like it's a good 
game <laughs> you know like they yeah. took what they took what warzone is and just made it way smaller and more compact and more faster and more just appetizing for a bite-sized form to play in mobile and it's like oh that actually sounds really smart and uh <laughs> really cool a way to like transform that game for like mobile but no one gives a fuck they just look at the eight and go ha fucking what it chills and that, that's what's funny to me too is like is you have to have kind of an objective look at it like uh, it's weird to me like i could see on paper seeing like oh call of duty mobile eight out of ten and then call of duty console is probably like eight out of ten as well yeah and then like why are they reviewed the same well you have to look at it it's it's not in a bubble like you have to look at it like okay this is on mobile how does it feel as a mobile game? Like, there's a lot of things you need to consider for... That's why I think numerical reviews are fucking dumb. Like, just yeah. have someone talk to me about the game, tell me, like, hey, these are things I liked about these things I didn't like about it. All in all, I recommend it. And then, like, cool. Like, let me... Let me see which, which of those are a deal-breaker for me. <laughs> you know but what I mean? Like, even, even for... Because you got to take your audience into account, too. Like if IGN reviews yeah. like Diablo Four, perfect example, to where if you look at it from a casual audience perspective, Diablo Four is like eight, nine, maybe I would even say nine out yeah. of ten. If I were to give yeah, it a it's score, an, it's a nine. It's a nine out of ten. We played the campaign. It's like a six out of ten with the end game. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, and but that I wouldn't be looking at it for like that a uh, niche of an audience. And the broader scale, the game for the casuals is like nine. It's a great, fantastic fucking game. 20 to 30 hours of that campaign. And you get your fucking money's worth, man. It's like, it's fucking great. Yeah. Uh, and then the end game is like where it starts falling apart a little bit. But that, like, yeah. most people won't even fucking care about that. Um, yeah. If I were to, like, give that advice to someone from my, like, purchasing perspective, they just wanted to play the fucking game, I'd be like, yeah, that's it's a solid fucking game yeah uh, and that, that's what's so crazy about like numerical reviews is that there's so much to be taken into account to give it a number is difficult to to do because then you piss people off who are like if you look at it in a vacuum again like oh you gave like diablo 4 a 9 out of 10 but you gave you know this other game an 8 out of 10 that's obviously better to me like <laughs> Yeah. You open yourself <laughs> up to that and it's like, why are we comparing these two games? Like yeah. Well you, you invite that by giving things numerical scores and you you say like this game is as good as this game. Like well what did they give uh what did they give uh South Park so three out of ten? Yeah. Yeah, still a better score than God Hand. <laughs> you know, that's where that meme came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, God Hand. God Hand is a better game than. See, it seems like God Hand is a better game than uh, that yeah. South Park the, game. Th th that's what I mean. Like, to to give these like numerical scores. That's why I stopped listening to numerical scores once I once I became old enough to spend my own money on my games. I stopped listening to numbers, and I started like actually listening to the context and. Yeah. using my own taste to help determine it and not just that my taste but the taste of like the person i'm listening to like i said like g-man lives is like my he's my fps guy like i listen to a review he puts out about a shooter if he says it's good i'm like okay this game is probably good then like yeah, but I, I also heard some reviews on some other games that i liked that he hated i'm like oh I, I disagree with you on that so it's knowing like what what there is to put up with and what there is to you know pros cons which are deal breakers for you like some people might hate a part of a game that you like about that game yeah. and it's important to get through that i had a buddy who fucking hated bayonetta because he didn't like the combo system he hated how like easy it was for enemies to like sneak a hit on him i'm like well it's you can cancel out of any combo. Like you can, yeah. you can just He's dodge. Right. You can stop your combo and dodge. <laughs> but he didn't like that. He yeah, didn't Jesus, like how. Jesus wrong. He didn't like that. He he had to like start dodge canceling, and which I'll argue objectively, bro, you're wrong. But yeah. if that's something you don't like doing, you know, if you want to play a game like 
I'm trying to think of an action game he's like into. Metal Gear Rising would be like it would be like that, but you can just like block at any point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like action games that he's played. I don't think he's played too many action games. That's probably it. It doesn't have an action game background, so stuff like that like isn't gonna vibe with them. And it's yeah. it's 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 something you have to take into account too, is like that audience is giving something a numerical score is like people can get put off by it. It's like, oh, this game is a piece of shit and they give it an eight out of ten. Well, it's a piece of shit to you because it's got this one thing that's a deal breaker for you. Like Yeah, so that's that South Park review. They gave it a three out of ten. Yeah. And one of the things I noticed right off the bat, right off the bat, is that in that review, he's using very charged language. You can tell he fucking hates the game right off the bat. He's using very charged language. He's like, if you have the unfortunate uh, f- uh, ability to invite three of your uh, most hated friends to join you in this terrible adventure, he's like saying that right off the top. And I'm like, dude, just like ease up a bit. Like, we know you don't like the game, but like, that's not like, cause I feel like using charged language like that fills the viewer with they're already going to hate it now that you're using this charge language which you don't have to use you might think it's a three but you can like ease off like the language a bit uh i don't know that was something i noticed off the bat but it did seem like a kind of game like if you were into what south park is it's not as like edgy in terms of like the humor it like doesn't really do the south park thing you really expect which I don't know, three is kind of low. Like for for IGN that doesn't use that part of the scale very much, I feel like a three is just like wow, you really, you know, like a, a six would be like even Starfield didn't get like that low. And I'm like, but <laughs> like Starfield was kind of like in that range, but whatever. A three is crazy. I am on. This is what I'm talking about when I say I fucking hate numerical scores. Yeah. I am on IGN site right now. I'm reviewing. I'm looking at all the reviews from three to three point nine. South Park Snow Day, three out of ten. Atomic Heart Trapped in Limbo, three out of ten. Skull Island, three out of ten. Yeah, that's crazy. Like Mortal Kombat One for Switch, three out of ten. Like they reserve that shit for like br- broken, fucking busted games. Like, they usually don't go that low for just a game that's completely functional. By the way, that game is, like, 30 bucks. by the way. So, it's, like, not even a full-price game. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and argue, like, the, the the three. I don't really care that they gave it a three, but it's just the, the three is, like, in their scale, reserved for games that are completely fucking broken. Uh, so, for them to put that there, like, it could be a bad game, but it's not, like, broken by any stretch. I haven't played it. And I, I maybe that, if I that, that's what it, that's what like, I that's what I mean. Like to to put a number on it, you're and you if you put numbers on these reviews, you're yeah, bringing it, it up. Open for, it leaves it open for comparison. Like, yeah. and it could just be like that reviewer just didn't like that game, or they didn't, don't like that style of game. You know, if um, if I had to play a FIFA game, I wouldn't even know where to <laughs> fucking start with that review, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to fucking start. But you to know what? I FIFA. like. But I like the idea because a lot of sentiment is that well, you should just go to reviews for people that share your same interest or whatever. But I kind of I agree with that partially. But I also feel like if if the guy that hates FIFA reviewed a FIFA game or just has never played a FIFA game, I feel like there's a lot of insight that that guy could have on a fifa game that i yeah. might not if i'm a fifa diehard i might be blind to some of the flaws that fifa had you know what i mean like I, I feel like that the newcomer could have a lot of insight that i might overlook as the like diehard fifa guy um like that could be another beneficial perspective yeah that, th- th- there's there's a lot to like consider with it that's what makes review so tricky is that it's really tricky to like review something because there's a lot of onus on the like there's a lot of onus on the the consumer too to like read into the review and decide like hey is uh 
how do I feel about these pros? How do I feel about these cons? Yeah. Is there a deal breaker there for me? No. Even if one of them was a deal breaker, are like the advantages, the pros, like gonna outweigh that? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, I started watching. Like, a I'm lot not a sports. Those. Like I'm not a sports games fan. I don't like sports video games, but I fucking love NBA Street. <laughs> yeah. So any other time, a sports game deal breaker. Blitz. But NBA Street though, it's like, oh wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I might have to like refrain from that. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 important to like understand like your own interests, your own uh, what you like, what you don't like, and interpret that in these reviews. Like, numerical reviews are dog shit. I don't listen to numerical reviews anymore. Yeah, and then yeah, just the last thing I have is that there's a lot of those um. There's a lot of recently, a lot of fucking like those six hour, eight hour, 12 hour, there's like a 20 hour fucking Skyrim like retrospectives analysis. Yeah. yeah. Where they're not reviews in the same way because there's not a lot of opinion in them. There's some opinion, but it's mostly just factual fucking here's this mechanic in this game. Here's why it does not work. And here's why it's either good or here's why it works. Here's why it's good. Here's why it doesn't work. Here's why it's bad. Here's how they can fix it to where it does work. Um, I feel like that shit is very useful for just analyzing why a game is bad or why it's good or why shit works and doesn't work. And there's a lot of shit you just cannot argue, right? Um, yeah. Toss out to a few like private sessions is a good one. Patrician TV is a good one where they just have hours and hours of shit just analyzing. Um, I love those. I love stuff like that. Yeah. If it's a game I already like, <laughs> I love what, listen to those. Just even if you, yeah, you're right. They're, they're not reviews. Like even uh, if you don't like, or even if you like a thing and they're like, here's why this game is bad. And it's cause you, and you like it. You just going to admit that. Yeah. It's a bad game, but I like it. Which yeah. I feel like a lot of people just don't have the balls to do. Yeah. But I, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I freely admit that I yeah. fucking love God Hand. It's a bad game. I fucking love that game. Like objectively, but yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, game reviews. Game reviews are a trip, man. Just play what you want, you know. And, and like you said, acknowledge like if a game's bad objectively, admit it. But admit, you can even like a bad game. It's okay to like a bad game. Like yeah, like Starfield is a bad game, but there's a lot of people that like Starfield that just don't want to. The, their thing is, yeah, you know, it has a lot of flaws, but I like it, and that's fine. Yeah, not, Starfield isn't so much for the... me. Not so much for me, but Fallout 4, I was just talking about Fallout 4, bad oh, game, yeah, yeah. objectively. Yeah. Objectively, it's a bad game. But yeah. I fucking love it. I like Fallout 4. I like vanilla Fallout 4. Yeah, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, I know, I'm a psychopath. I have 118 hours in this game. And I like it. <laughs> objectively it's not a good game but i like it um yeah that's that's just me uh new trailers and videos windblown looks fucking cool yes this, this is from the cool. guys it's that uh dead cells yeah dead cells guys yeah yeah it's like a a one to three player like action rpg roguelike i'm into it i'm into it it's early access now. Add it to your wish list, everybody. This game's gonna be dope. Yeah, I'm. I'm. So, I don't know what exactly the the form of this game is. Is it a uh, roguelike? I haven't been like following what anything they've said about. Uh, the tag says action roguelike indie game multiplayer. So that's I'm just that's what based on what I'm seeing here. Like it's run based. Like they're it's like they're taking like the Hades like. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm cool with. I'm into that. Multiplayer Hades? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> From the Dead Cells guys? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Next is uh, Eternal Strands. Okay, um, so this game is relevant because this is coming like, uh, from... Um... Shadow Colossus from home. It's like it's like Shadow of the Colossus mixed with Breath of the Wild mixed with oh. Monster Hunter. Oh, I'm into it. Okay. Yeah, and th so it's from Yellow Brick Games, which is uh, Mike Laidlaw's joint, uh, who's ex Bethesda. He he did he was the lead. He was the director, the lead director on the 
de, dead no um dragon dragon age he's a dragon age guy Ooh, he's okay. the, the creative director of dragon age all of those games so, okay okay um, cool he left bioware made his own studio and this is their first joint uh so this is the cover game for ign this month so this they're, looks gonna good, sh- dude. They're, they're gonna be showing more of this but yeah, it's basically like Shadow Colossus, but what if it had, you know, what if you had the powers from Breath of the Wild and, like, a combat system that was kind of like, um, you know, weapon variety of, uh, of like, a, a Monster Hunter. Really cool. I like that. Okay, I'm into it. It's a single-player game? I believe it's single-player. Cool. I believe so. I'm into it. Okay, I'm adding that to my wish list. This looks dope. Yeah. So they'll be showing yeah. more of this on IGN yeah. this month. So yeah, be this has been going for that. two hours. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, but like I'm sure my son's driving my wife crazy. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna like no Eternal Trans looks good. I'm adding to my wish list like right now. That looks incredible. Yeah. Like it's checking all boxes for me, man. I'm checking all my boxes. My boxes are checked. All right. I gotta get to hear her. She's just like, hey, no, don't touch that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> game oh. releases yeah. freedom planet 2 is coming to switch 4 5 1 and x um we love that game i, thought that, was, I thought that was out already i, I think it's out on pc oh just not switch then okay i figured it was out on consoles though but i guess not i guess not yeah freedom plant the first freedom Planet's not bad i can see the appeal of it i had some fun with it I was just never into um, the old school Sonic shit, man. So same. Like, I was never. That was the never mix it for of me. like go fast versus like oh now you gotta do some platforming. Now you gotta go slow. Uh, was just never. I never enjoyed that. Yeah, the game like does not reward. It's a kind of game that rewards like repetition. Yeah. If you play it multiple times, you can get a faster time, but it does its damnedest like slow you down your first playthrough. Yeah. Like, the thrill of, like, going fast comes from, like, learning the level out and not just, like, you know, just playing through it. Yeah. Which is mm, not not it. It's not it for me. It's not going to do it for me. Um, yeah, you can get that on console, dropping April 4th. Everything from Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. Next, we got The Gap. It's a neurological... Driven by a, neuro- a rare neurological affliction plaguing his family, Josh has to recover his memories by exploring a parallel reality through deja vu. It's a mystery, atmospheric, walking sim adventure game. So check that out, I guess, if you're into that thing. Not my <laughs> cup of tea, but... Yeah. April 5th, we got Biomorph releasing on Switch. Not Switch, sorry, Steam. Yeah, PC, Steam. This looks cool, actually. It's a pretty neat looking uh, Metroidvania, yeah. With a nice looking hand drawn art style. I'm into it. I'm into it. Okay, that's going on the wish list. Oh, there's a demo now. I'm going to download the demo. Almost looks like Ori, but not as like graphically <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it's got that. Um, it's using hand drawn aesthetics, but it's the. Uh, it's like a uh, rigs. How can I word it? You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah. The character models are like on rigs, so there's like points of like um, articulation on the model. Yeah. Instead of like drawing out like a sprite, which like is fine. Like I don't. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. It looks fine. But yeah, it looks cool. I like this idea. You could like get enemy abilities and like become them. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, like April ninth. Yeah. April 9th, we got Botany Manor. Uh, it's an exploration immersive sim puzzle game. Where you play as Arabella Green, a retired botanist. Explore your house and garden. Do some research. It's nice. Look a good time. Look a relaxing game. Uh, Children of the Sun on PC. Looks significantly less relaxing. What the hell is this? <laughs> On a deadly road trip in the darkness, control the path of a single bullet and unleash a fury of vengeance on the sinister cult that ruins your life in this tactical puzzle shooter. What? This looks... It's by Devolver? Okay. I add to that wish list. What is this? 
It's like a sniper, a sniper elite type thing. I, it looks like it. It says control path with a single bullet. What does that mean? Is that is it like um? You know what it sounds like? It sounds it sounds like the crash mode from the old Burnout games, where you try a to like bit. set you set up your thing and you just go, and then you try to cause as much damage as you can on one on one go. So it almost it looks like, like it, yeah. It's like a there's a demo for it, so I might check that out. Oh yeah, you like hit a guy and you curve the bullet to like the next guy. To try to kill everyone in one shot. That's fucking cool. That is cool. I like the art style. That's cool. Yeah, yeah me too. Okay. That is neat. Okay. There's a demo for it. I think I'll download it after the show. And last but not least, Gigantic Rampage Edition. Yeah. So I played Moba? the classic... I played the classic version of this. Um, it took me a while to remember what the fuck this game was, but it is like, it's like a team PvP game, and both teams have a giant, like, phoenix or a creature, and you, like, do stuff, and then your creature attacks the other team's creature, and whoever kills the other creature first wins. I like that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. It's still like a... A MOBA hero shooter, so not quite my cup of tea, but I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll watch some gameplay and see if I want to pick it up. Yeah. Looked interesting, though. But not quite my cup of tea. All right, and that's going to do it for the show, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah. Not a lot happened this week, but I think we got... I like talking about video games, so I don't care if there's no topics. I just like talking about games. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what we do here. We talk about video games. Yeah. Tell people where they can find us. We can talk more about video games. And you can talk about video games if you go to GameRush.com, GameRush.com slash Twitch, GameRush.com slash YouTube, GameRush.com slash Discord. Hop in at Discord and, uh, yeah, talk about video games. Tell us what you've been playing. Tell us what games you would give a 3 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. And then we'll fight over the score and nothing else <laughs> because the score is all that matters. Yeah, but all that, uh, all that matters is the number at the end of your review. Fuck context. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's going to do it. That's going to do it. Thank you, everybody, for coming and listening. Y'all be cool, be safe, be excellent to each other, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye.